I've always ridden with a round or circular chainring, but I've seen a lot of chatter about the benefits of an oval. So recently I decided to try one out. Now we all know what a round chainring feels like. They are by far the most common type of chainring and they provide a consistent pull on the drive chain throughout a complete rotation on your cranks. Oval chainrings, however, are a little different. They are much less common and so far very much an aftermarket change to your bike. I've not seen a bike come with an oval standard yet, even though they have been around for quite some time. Now the idea of an oval is to help increase pedaling efficiency and reduce fatigue. And it does this by basically gearing up the bike when your legs are at their strongest and gearing down the bike when your legs are at their weakest. Now this 32 tooth oval acts like a 30 tooth when your legs are at their weakest or during the recovery phase of your pedal stroke and it acts like a 34 tooth when your legs are at their strongest or during the power phase of your pedaling stroke. So in this video I'm going to share the differences I've noticed when going from a round to an oval chainring and I'm also going to mention a lot of other things you need to be aware of if you decide to use an oval. Now before you buy an oval it is worth checking that your frame can take one and by that what I mean is some frames can only take up to, for example, a 36 tooth chainring. But a 36 tooth oval probably won't work. And that's because at its widest point that chainring will be more like a 38 tooth chainring. And if you fit that it's probably going to cause damage to your frame. Most of the time you'll be absolutely fine and you'll be able to get away with going one size bigger again. But it is worth checking before you buy one. Something else worth checking is the offset of your existing chainring. Now offset refers to the position of the chain in relation to where it attaches to your crank arm. The bigger the offset, the further away from the crank it'll sit. The smaller the offset, the closer to the crank it'll sit. Now it's really important you get the same offset as your existing chain ring. If you don't, it can lead to an increased amount of drop chains, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. It can lead to a really noisy drive chain, as you'll have more of an angle on the chain more of the time. And it can also, in extreme cases, damage your frame. One last thing before you buy a chain ring is to make sure you get the right fitment for your cranks. Now every brand of crank has an ever so slightly different way of fitting them, just make sure you get the right one for you. My first thoughts were well, this is a little bit strange. There's like this weird pulsing sensation as you pedal along, as the chain ring effectively gears the bike up and down twice per rotation on the crank. It's not awkward or difficult to ride with at all. It's just a very different feeling to a round chainring. I'm certainly not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. And to be honest, you will get used to it very quickly. I did and now I don't really notice it. After fitting the oval, I went out for a couple of rides, which I normally would. And straight away, I felt like I was saving a little bit of energy and I felt like my leg muscles were a little less tired when I got home from a ride. I've also noticed I'm able to push a harder gear more of the time, especially on steeper banks. So instead of going up them banks in first or second gear, I'm able to go up them in third or even fourth gear. I don't actually think I've used my bottom gear since fitting the oval. A lot of people say when you fit an oval from a round chain ring, you should go up two teeth. So I run a 32 tooth round chain ring, that means I should have really gone for a 34 tooth oval. And I can completely see why. It would help to stay in the middle of that cassette, because at the moment I feel like I'm right at the top end of it all of the time, and especially when I'm cranking along on the flat, I feel like I'm really pushing that 11th gear. Where previously I was in 10th or maybe even 9th and I had the option to go up to the 10th or 11th gear. However, for those advantages, there was also a huge disadvantage. When I was stood up cranking hard or sat down cranking for longer periods of time, my knees started to feel the strain a lot earlier than they normally would. Yes, the oval might suit my leg muscles, helping them to work at their optimum with reduced fatigue, but it certainly did not help my knees. 95% of the time, I don't think there's a difference between the oval and the round chainring in terms of traction to your rear wheel. 
However, on those steeper muddy banks and those steeper loose banks, I don't think the oval is as good. And the best way I can describe this is it's a bit like braking. If you're really erratic and very on off with your brakes, you're gonna lose grip. Where if you feather the brakes and you're smooth with them, you're gonna have a lot more grip for longer. And it's the same principle with the oval. The difference between the power phase and the recovery phase of your pedaling stroke with the oval is much bigger than it is with a round chain ring. So in effect, you are a bit more on off with the power. Now, if like me, only a small portion of your riding is going up loose steep banks or loose slippery banks, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you do that kind of stuff all the time, maybe it's something to think about. I've not dropped any more chains since fitting the oval in comparison to when using a standard round chain ring, but I've seen a few people say they have, and I can see two reasons why this might be happening. Firstly, any existing chain device you have fitted is not going to be as effective, and that's because the oval chain ring is constantly taking the chain up and down towards and away from that chain guide, so it's not going to be able to work in the same way that it previously has. Secondly, if your new chain ring has a different offset to your old one, it could mean your chain is at more of an angle. The bigger that angle, the more likely your chain is to hop off that front ring when you combine that with a little bit of chain slap when you're out riding. Since fitting the oval, I've done about 350 kilometers and I haven't noticed any increase in the rate of wear and tear on any part of my bike. Now, if you've ridden a lot more than I have with an oval, or you've had one for a while, and have an opinion on this, stick it down in the comments below. It would be great to know what you guys think. Although there are some benefits to using an oval, I still prefer a standard round chain ring. And that's because the round chain ring doesn't hurt my knees anywhere near as much as the oval. If the oval didn't hurt my knees, I'd probably have one fitted to my bike. I hope you guys found this video useful. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.